how to turn basic shapes into curves and nodes in Affinity Photo. Now I'm using a document 1600 by 1600. Let's quickly show you that. And I'm going to go to the View menu. Show Column Guides. That's what I'm going to use. I like guides, they're very useful. Go to the Guides Manager and Column Guides section. It's a bit slightly confusing this because it combines two types of guides. But Column Guides, let's go to that. I'm going to put that to 10 and 10. And also, it always defaults to 100 for the gutter. Don't want that. Zero. And Set Outlines and Close. Sadly, you can't save a preset for some weird reason. Most things in Affinity Photo have presets, but not this. Now I'm going to start from a very basic shape in this example. I'm going to use a circle later. I'm just going to quickly create a rectangle or square in this case. So I've got a square document. Square is really useful. And what you can then do, of course, change the color. Could add a gradient, etc. Just going to go with basic solid color. And what you can do, you can go to a layer menu and convert to curves. There's a number of other ways you can right click, etc. There's also a convert curve button. So now what's happened, you've got some nodes to work with. So go to the nodes tool. So now with the nodes tool, you can add additional nodes. And I'm just going to add them at those midpoints all the way around the square. Just click there. Now I could, of course, add more than that. I could go all the way around the square, add it for each of the intersections. I could have done guides 20 by 20 instead. Now for each of those nodes, go to the top and smooth them. And also drag out the anchor points. Drag it out to about that sort of position. About halfway to the other cell. And then I'm going to... So halfway there as well, and you can see, so what you could, I mean, you can vary it, of course. You don't have to drag the anchor points out. You could maybe put them smaller. Depends what you want to do with the design. But I'm going to go for about there and about there. And again, go to the last one. Well, another one actually, go, click that one, and again, convert. And again, do the same. You can see the difference, it's a circle. A dot and not a square, and then drag it out again, and go to the the last one this time, and go to the smooth, and then just drag the anchor out, and again the other way to about that half point. So now you've got your design. What you can now do, you can drag those points, those nodes into the center. And I'm just going to drag it to that point just above the center point and likewise just above the center point the other way across so i'm just going to move it so you can see now i've got one cell distance to the center in all the cases so you've got that design that's a quite nice design propeller like design but you of course could continue drag it all the way to the center And it will click into place because of the snap options in the view menu. And drag that. So now you've got this lovely design here. And that's all from a square. And of course, I could add some more points if I wanted to. I could make it more jagged all the way around. I could reposition that endpoint. But what I can also do, I can duplicate the design. I can add effects. I can add filters. But I'm just going to quickly go and create effects. I'm going to do that via the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm going to add a very basic one in this case. I could add bevel, 3D, etc. But I'm just going to go for a drop shadow and close. I'm going to get rid of the guides. 
So, view menu and show column guides, turn them off. Sometimes they get in the way. Now with that design selected, what I can do, I can duplicate it. So hold down the alter option key and duplicate. Then I can resize it, I can rotate it, I can reposition it, I've just positioned it on top, so I can rotate it now. So I can now create a lovely oh, flower design. And of course I could change the colour, I don't have to go with red, I could go up to the fill at the top and change it to orange or blue. Could add a style colour overlay. Or, of course, I could just keep the same size or just reduce it slightly and then position it like that and repeat that. Hold down the Alter Option key and duplicate and resize just slightly so you can build up a basically a pyramid of those designs on top of each other. And because of the shadow, of course, you can actually see it. If it was, of course, without shadow or a bevel, etc., you wouldn't be able to see the because it would all be red. So I think the shadow gives it a nice dramatic effect. And you can repeat that a number of times and just keep building this up. And you can see in the layers panel, you've got the all layers. So you can always, if you wish, change the color of any of those layers, as well as add effects to them. Which, if you add an effect to it, what happens, it'll be rasterized. At the moment, there's still vectors. And of course, you can always rotate them. You can select individual layers and rotate them. Maybe same angle, maybe slightly different angles. Don't all have to be, it doesn't have to be uniform. So you can create all kinds of lovely designs there using this approach. And they're all vectors, so they can still be resized, distorted, modified in all kinds of ways. Especially using the node tool. And you could add more points to them, of course. And you can, of course, go to the fill color, and you can change the fill color that way. You can also change the fill color by using adjustment layers. And adjustment layers are pretty good, because not only can you change colors, well, you can change colors, of course, but you can change them in different ways from the, just the basic fill. Maybe add color lookup, etc., to each of the layers. So you can create some beautiful designs like that. And I'm going to show an example of the using adjustments in the next part of the video. So you can select them all. And what you can do, you can always just then right click and you can group. So all grouped now in an individual design, complete. Now what you can also do, of course, once they're in a group, you can always save them to the assets. Of course, you'd always export them as well. If you want to save them, so assets panel via the view and studio. So you can go to the right side of the assets. And there's an add from selection. The reason I group them, if you added, if you did it without grouping, they'd all be individually added and that would be no point. So you've got your design there. And what you can do then, of course, is you can simply drag from there. And of course, what you can do, because it's just they're just layers, you can go to the layers individually, reopen them, change the colours of the individual designs, maybe add effects to them. Maybe go to the filter menu for each of those layers, and maybe add a blur, so you can blur the background or something. Resize the design. Of course, what you can also do, you can go to the node tool, go to the layers panel, and individually change parts of the design. So you go to select that one, and select that curve, and you can see now the nodes are available, and you can just change them. Maybe drag them in. And now you don't have to keep it regular. Of course, you could just leave that one change. 
but you can, of course, if you wish, duplicate the movement. And you could repeat that, of course, for the other parts of the design, if you wish. Or you could modify that using the anchors. Now that's all been created from standard rectangle. But also what you can do, of course, you can use a different shape. Maybe a circle this time. I'm going to use guides again. Don't really need guides for this one. Actually, what would be really nice would be if there was a guide manager that allowed for radial guides. Sadly, the it's column guides. But I can always hope that maybe a radial guide system would be in place. So, so I've got the same grid as before. Unfortunately, it doesn't keep it in its memory. So you have to enter the values each time. And this time I'm going to use an ellipse tool. And I'm just going to create a circle. Now, I don't want it to be white. Could be, of course. But I'm just going to change the color using the fill. And in this case, I'm going to show you also adjustments because you, you can, obviously, I can recolor via the fill there. But you can also recolor via adjustments, which may be more effective if you've rasterized the design. Maybe you've applied a fill and then you want to recolor the design if you Apply the blur, etc. And now what I'm doing, I'm adding nodes. I'm going, so I've converted to a curve via the convert curve button. And then I'm just going around with the node tool all the way around the edge. Now I'm splitting it evenly all the way around. Because I find it's because of all the anchor points, it makes it very hard to see. So it's always best to go to the next empty area. Another empty area, so you just go around and just keep adding these evenly all the way around. Now this does mean that when you come to do the next step, slightly not as useful, and you could probably add a couple of additional, and you don't have to keep it even, of course. I've gone for even. You could add them from random distances around this circle. It doesn't have to be uniform. Maybe you could put two or three points in each area instead of just two or one. It doesn't have to be perfection. It's, a, it's going to be an irregular shape. It's not going to be perfect. Not like the, the previous one, the square, which was easier to exactly get right. This one is more by just eye. And you can see as you go around, you can add points. And again, because of the anchor points, it makes it very hard to spot where the center is. So it's always best to go to an area where there's no points. And what you can then do, you can drag them out. And I'm just going to skip one each time. And I'm just going to put it very close, or fairly close to the center. Not exactly in the center, because it's just slightly offset. And again, it's going to be uneven. I'm not going to have them all equal distance. So I'm just going to leave it there. So you can see it's not, not going to be perfect. I'm skipping one. You don't have to, of course, but I'm just going to, I like to do it that way. Just skip a point. Skip that one. Just go around. And you, you can skip maybe two or three points. You don't need to have it exactly even. Oh, got lots of birds outside. Lovely. Right. What I can then do, I can then, of course, go to the next point and then drag that in as well. Mm. Must be some food around. <laughs> the birds are going, loving it. Now you'll see, <laughs> now I've got slightly uneven. I've got this extra point. So what you can do, you can always add another point if you want, or simply just drag that point in and leave the other one, just move them around. It's not perfection. I'll just add a point there and drag that in. And you can put it approximately there. And again, it's not perfect because I've got some areas, I don't want to make it sort of overlap itself. In this case, 
So you can move them around. Of course, it's just nodes. You can still use the node tool just to move things around. And once you're happy with the design, you've got this lovely splat design. Now you could work with that if you wish. Maybe they say you could save that to the assets panel. So you just go to the assets panel and then add from selection and you will have this design for future use. Of course, what you can do, you can go to the ellipse tool again and you can add additional shape. Now you can maybe fill, make it even. Or you can apply it to the center. Make it closer. Up to you. Just vary it. And you can always resize it, of course. And you can always reposition it. Maybe have it further out. And it doesn't have to be a circle. It could be elliptical. You could move it, shift it to the side, just to create different shapes. Of course, once you've done this, what you want to do is you go to the layer menu and geometry and add them together. So I've selected both of the shapes, the vector layers. So you can go to the layer panel and geometry and add. And of course, what you can then do, there's a nice central point. I'm going to make another, just going to make a gap in it. And it doesn't have to be, again, exactly matching the circle. You can move it around, make the hole slightly offset. I should always find it slightly hard when it's the same colour. So what I like to do often is go and change the colour. Bring up the colour. Yep. Bring the colour up. And change, I could change the fill, of course, at the top as well. So you can now see it a bit clearer. And you can move it around, you can resize it, see what you feel works best. What you want from your design. And you go with something like that, otherwise I could just keep moving it. And of course you could add maybe three or four circles and build up a more complex centre. And what you can then do, of course, lay menu, geometry, and this time, subtract. And then you've got your nice circular design there. And what you can then do, of course, you can add styles, effects. You could, of course, duplicate the design via the layer menu. Go down to duplicate. You could rasterize it. But before I do anything like that, I'm going to add some effects. So down to effects, down the bottom for that selected design. And this time I'm going to add maybe 3D or bevel. Sometimes I think 3D, yep, 3D. I think 3D works better. Now I would love it to be really truly 3D. It'd be nice if you could make a real wonderful extrusion. So add some 3D features and Affinity Photo would be brilliant. So Outer Shadow. And then radius and offset and intensity. And of course you could change other settings. So you've got your design there. I'm going to get rid of the guides now. So view, show column guides. So they're gone. Now, of course, what I can do, I can save that to assets if I want to. So I'll go to the assets panel and save it to an assets. But I can also hold down the alter option key and duplicate and then just resize. And then reposition, align it. Now I could use, of course, the align tools, but it's just as easy just to move around and decide visually. And again, repeat, alter option and duplicate and create another one. Now I don't have to keep it all uniform like that. I can always rotate them. I could change the size, I could recolor them. I'm going to do some of that later. And of course you could do this, do it more and more times. 
maybe five or six times. You can go too far, maybe. And you can always add something different in the centre, if you wish. Or maybe use it as a frame. Right, what I can do, I say I can rotate those designs, so I don't have to make them even. I could select different ones, rotate them different angles. Again, doesn't have to be uniform at all, even though I'm trying to do that with this. So you've got your design there, the sunburst design. Select all the shapes. And they're all still vectors, they're all still curves. But what you can do, you could select all the shapes and then group them. But you can also select individual ones. So I'm just going to select that one and layer menu, new adjustment layer. And I'm going to go with, could go with black and white, recolor, posterize, a whole load of different adjustments. Now, at this point, you'll notice what happens is everything that's below is turned red. Now, I don't want that. I don't want all of them to be turned red. And that's not ideal. It's only because that was the layer that I was on. What you can do, of course, I can change the hue there. Select that one. If I select that one, again, layer menu. Go down there, new adjustment layer. And maybe use a different one. Or maybe use HSL. Change that. And again, you'll see the layers below a change. Now, I don't want that. What I want is it to be applied just to one of the curves. So I just drag it down to there. And you can see them, but just simply dragging it onto the curve, it's changed. Now, you can then, of course, repeat that. And you can drag it down to another one if you wish. So just select that. It's just a layer. You can just move it around. So just select and then drag. Once it's on that one, you can see the color will be changed there. It will be taken off the existing one. But you can duplicate adjustment layers. And you can always drag it back if you don't want it on that one. So you can see it then moves to that one. And you can always, of course, the adjustment layers are always active. So you can always double click on them and change them. So if you don't want the pink, you want it to be turned into blue, then you can do that. But what you can also do, you can go with that one selected, that adjustment layer. You can go down to duplicate. And then you'll notice you've got two entries, which maybe is what you want. But what you can do, you can always select one of those and just drag it down to another one. And you can change the color there. Now, of course, as mentioned, you can always change it by the fill or use styles. There's another option. You can change color there. So you can create some quite super colorful designs. Of course, you can group them all and then save them all to the assets or maybe export them. You can always go to File Menu and Export. You can rasterize it by the layer menu. You can right, start, right click and click Group. So you can group them all. Or you can merge visible if you want to do that. So they just all merge visible into one single design. Hope you found that of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always adding new tutorials about Finity Photo, Photoshop, many others. Please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.